Welcome back uh, to the lecture series on uh, metrology. Now we will start uh, module number 12, lecture 7. In this uh, lecture, uh, we will cover uh, the following uh, topics. Limitations of uh, atomic force microscopy, measurement uh, challenges associated with uh, AFM and uh, large area AFM, calibration of AFM. And finally, we will start the discussion on optical system design. Now, in the previous lecture, we discussed about the construction and working of atomic force microscopy. Also, we discussed about the applications of AFM. Now, let us study what are the limitations of atomic force microscopy. The major limitation is the scanning uh, area, it can uh, image a maximum uh, height of uh, the order of 10 to 20 micrometer and maximum uh, scanning area that is x-axis and y-axis scanning uh, size is uh, 150 uh, by 150 micrometer. The travel range of uh, XY sample stage is uh, 20 millimeter by 20 millimeter and z-axis uh, movement is uh, limited to about uh, 20 millimeter. The scanning speed of EFM is another important uh, limitation of this uh, device. Uh, a maximum uh, scan range of uh, 40 micron by 40 micron capable of uh, scanning uh, 5 microns by 5 micron area uh, takes about uh, five seconds to scan this much uh, area so the scanning uh, speed is uh, very slow also the functioning of afm is very much uh, dependent on uh, the cantilever and uh, probe uh, design the size of uh, the probe tip the material of uh, cantilever so very precise cantilever and probe uh, are needed to get uh, meaningful uh, measurement results. The sample size can go up to 50 millimeter by 50 millimeter and height uh, 20 millimeter. If uh, the workpiece uh, size is greater than this, then uh, it may not be possible with the uh, regular uh, AFM uh, devices. And uh, currently, uh, large area AFMs uh, are designed, which we will uh, discuss after a short while. Now what are the measurement uh, challenges associated with uh, AFM? The calibration, quantification and understanding of uh, different modes of uh, uh, working of AFM uh, is a big uh, challenge. So we should uh, properly understand uh, the different uh, modes of operation uh, like uh, force uh, spectroscopy mode multi-frequency modes, frequency modulation mode, lateral force and amplitude modulation uh, mode. Uh, uh, properly we should select uh, the mode depending upon uh, the application and obtaining uh, valid additional information from uh, AFM is another uh, challenge and uh, imaging uh, soft uh, samples at high resolution uh, with the minimum uh, damage to the surface is another uh, challenge. The reason is we are using a very uh, sharp uh, probe tip uh, with uh, 20 to 800 nanometer tip radius. So there are chances that uh, the tip may scratch uh, the surface. So imaging uh, uh, the soft samples is another uh, challenge associated with uh, AFM. Another big challenge is uh, uh, the necessity of vibration free stage uh, uh, requirement. If there is a vibration of uh, the stage, then uh, all the measurement results will not be meaningful. Now we can see an image obtained 
by AFM. Uh, the, this is the glass uh, surface, clean uh, glass uh, surface. The scanned area is uh, 6 micrometer by 6 micrometer and the roughness of this uh, glass surface is 0.8 uh, nanometer. Now we have another uh, image, three dimensional uh, image of uh, ultra high speed uh, face milled stainless steel uh, surface. You can see the scanned area is about uh, uh, 80 millimeter by 80 micrometer by 80 micrometer. Now the conventional AFM they have a very limited uh, scanning uh, range. So recently large area uh, atomic force uh, microscopes have been uh, devised wherein uh, the area of scanning is uh, as large as uh, 10 millimeter by 10 uh, millimeter. You can see the schematic arrangement of uh, large area AFM. This is the uh, cantilever with probe attached to the PZT, Z axis uh, PZT. And this is the table X uh, axis of uh, the sample table and the specimen is placed on the table. D is uh, the distance uh, that, that is the obey offset, the height of uh, the workpiece surface uh, from uh, the reference uh, axis and uh, delta is displacement of the z-axis. L is the uh, length of the uh, z-actuator and the delta is the displacement of the z-actuator. And uh, uh, z-actuator stroke of uh, uh, 100 micrometer is possible in uh, large area scanning uh, AFM. So again, you can see the errors in uh, AFM. So the z-actuator may tilt as shown in this, uh, the cantilever may also tilt and then the, the table also can tilt, you can see the tilting of uh, x axis. Because of this, the measurement results uh, are uh, affected. So we should compensate for uh, these angular uh, errors by using appropriate uh, sensors. Now you can see here. Uh, the capacitive sensor uh, are used for compensation of the angular uh, errors. So this is the Z actuator and uh, two capacitive sensors are used for compensating the tilt of uh, the Z actuator. And to compensate the tilt of the table uh, surface, X angle sensor and Y angle uh, sensors are uh, used. And we can see the photographic view of uh, the large area AFM, this is the PZT actuator and uh, two capacitive sensors are used and then we have the AFM cantilever and this is the stage, sample stage and this is the sample placed on the sample stage. Now this uh, picture shows uh, a complete uh, system of uh, large area AFM, this is uh, the manual jet stage depending upon the height of the workpiece, initial uh, adjustment of z axis is made uh, manually and this is for coarse uh, adjustment of uh, tip uh, height and then we have the specimen and this is uh, the linear motor driven uh, x stage and uh, we have stepper motor driven uh, y stage and the raster scanning is possible by moving x and uh, y stage and the spiral scanning is also possible by using uh, a rotary uh, stage as shown uh, here. And normally air bearings are used in uh, these AFMs with uh, linear encoders uh, for feedback purpose. The resolution of such a system is uh, about 0.2 nanometer. I can uh, see the block diagram of large area AFM. You can see the X, Y, uh, stage with appropriate uh, drivers and then this is the uh, stage table surface on which a specimen is mounted and this is the cantilever with uh, uh, the probe and uh, the measurement results are uh, uh, sent uh, there is a feedback feedback uh, system and this is the PZT, uh, PZT driver 
and capacity sensors are used uh, for compensation uh, purposes. Now, how do we calibrate uh, the AFM? So, there are different methods available. In the theoretical method, the cantilever force constant is calculated from uh, the beam, beam mechanics using the elasticity theory. So, this requires uh, a very accurate knowledge of uh, dimensions of the cantilever, that is, uh, length, uh, width, thickness of uh, the cantilever and length modulus of material of uh, the cantilever. Other met method is the dynamic method in which uh, the cantilever force constant is obtained by analyzing the resonance frequency of uh, cantilevers. So, third method is uh, the wedge method in which uh, both uh, normal and uh, lateral force responses of the cantilever are studied during uh, friction measurements on sloped surfaces. So, this way also we can uh, calibrate AFM. A uh, very important uh, method of uh, calibration is by comparison. That means, a known force is applied uh, to the cantilever via artifacts and uh, the measured uh, force, the value given by the sensor is uh, compared with uh, the applied force. Thereby, the calibration of the FM is uh, possible. Now, for detailed uh, discussion on atomic uh, force uh, microscopy, so one can go through the NPTEL course by Professor R. Mukherjee uh, uh, from IIT Kharagpur. The topic of uh, the course is instability and uh, patterning of uh, thin polymer films. Now, uh, with this, we will close the discussion on AFM and uh, we will start the discussion on uh, optical system. Uh, design. Under this, we will uh, discuss about uh, the requirement of precision uh, optical systems, what are the different types of uh, optical uh, lenses used in optical systems, and then uh, the lens design defects in uh, lenses, and then what are the mounting errors uh, possible uh, when we mount uh, the lenses in uh, the barrels, and what are the different kinds of optical coatings uh, used, and how do we uh, mount uh, the lenses, what are the arrangements uh, possible and then we will discuss about the lens assembly and cementing of uh, uh, lenses, the manual and automated aligning and bonding uh, processes and then we will uh, discuss about complex optomechanical assemblies. Now, let us start uh, the discussion on uh, precision optical uh, systems. Now, we should understand uh, that an optical system is basically a combination of uh, different types of lenses, mirrors and uh, prisms uh, creating the optical part of uh, an optical uh, instrument such as a microscope or a camera or a telescope. Now, there is a, an ever uh, increasing demand for high performance uh, lens assemblies as uh, the optical systems. The lens assemblies are becoming uh, more and more complex and uh, sophisticated. Uh, newly emerging uh, life sciences and medical optics applications uh, such as uh, uh, distal pathology, DNA sequencing and uh, photolithography, they require uh, high-end uh, objectives with uh, highest uh, levels of resolution and uh, sensitivity. I can see here a part uh, produced by photolithography, an array of micro holes uh, uh, has been uh, made here with uh, the hole diameter of about 25 uh, microns. Now, in order to make this, uh, uh, it is very essential that we need a very sophisticated uh, optical uh, system during the exposure process of uh, photolithography so that we get uh, a fine array of uh, holes. Now, the lens uh, systems uh, must uh, uh, provide an extremely high level of uh, performance uh, such as uh, high numerical aperture, uh, large field angles, broad uh, spectrum 
spectral uh, bandwidth and uh, perfect wavefront correction. So uh, this uh, requires uh, lens. This makes lenses uh, highly sensitive to all sorts of manufacturing uh, uh, errors, especially to lens uh, alignment and air spaces during uh, assembly. So there is a challenge. Uh, not only to create compatible uh, lens designs, but also to manufacture and uh, assemble the lenses properly so that uh, the desired level of uh, performance is uh, obtained. Now, uh, these uh, pictures show the commonly used uh, types of uh, lenses, the biconvex uh, lens wherein uh, it has two uh, convex uh, surfaces at the center it is bulged a uh, plano convex uh, lens one uh, surface is flat and other one is convex positive uh, uh, meniscus negative meniscus and a plano concave wherein one uh, surface is uh, plane and other other one is concave and then we have a biconcave uh, uh, lenses so these uh, uh, different types are normally used in optical systems. Now uh, when we design uh, a, an optical system we should understand some basic uh, terminologies. So focal length is one uh, basic terminology associated with uh, lens uh, design. The focal length is a measure of how strongly the lens converges or diverges the light. For a lens working in the air medium it is the distance over which uh, collimated rays are brought to focus. You can see here in this diagram we have uh, uh, a biconvex uh, lens, optical lens and uh, one side we have uh, incident uh, light rays and these uh, light rays are uh, uh, brought to focus at point uh, F and the distance between the point F and the center of the lens is known as uh, focal uh, length. A lens with a shorter focal length has greater uh, optical power than uh, one with uh, a long uh, focal length. That means uh, the, a lens with uh, shorter focal length bends the rays more sharply bringing them to focus in a shorter uh, distance. So this diagram shows uh, the focal length of a simple convex uh, lens parallel uh, rays of light entering the lens are uh, brought to a point uh, focus at uh, f. So f is the focal uh, length. A small focal length gives a wide uh, angle view and a large focal length gives a tele view. And uh, in case of microscopes, uh, lenses with uh, a small uh, focal length are used and in the case of telescope, large focal length uh, lenses are uh, used. Now numerical aperture is another important terminology uh, associated with optical uh, system. It is uh, numerical aperture of uh, an optical system is a dimensionless number that characterizes uh, the range of angles over which uh, the system can accept the light. Uh, the numerical aperture is uh, calculated using the relationship uh, n times uh, sine mu, where n is uh, index of refraction of uh, the medium in which uh, lens is used. And uh, the value of n for air is 1 and for pure water it is uh, 1.33 and mu is uh, of uh, cone uh, angle. In uh, microscopy, uh, numerical uh, aperture indicates uh, the resolving power of uh, a lens. The size of the finest uh, detail that can be resolved is uh, proportional to lambda divided by 2 times Na, where uh, lambda is the wavelength of uh, the light. Uh, a lens with a larger uh, Na will be able to visualize uh, finer uh, details. You can see here we have uh, three lens uh, systems. In the case of uh, A, lens system A, 
The off cone angle is uh, 7 degree and numerical aperture is 0.12. As the numerical aperture value increases, the off cone angle value also increases. That means a lens system with larger NA will accept uh, more uh, light and it uh, gives a brighter uh, image. Another important thing is as uh, the value of NA increases, uh, the distance between the objective and the sample uh, reduces. Now what are the defects uh, in uh, lenses? There are some uh, constructional uh, errors. So when the parallel ray of uh, light impinge upon the lens perpendicular to the plane of the disc, the lens uh, bends the light rays so that uh, uh, the light rays uh, come to a focus. For example, this is the lens and this is the axis of the lens. The light ray uh, will be bent and it is made to focus at uh, uh, F. A lens which uh, effectively focuses the light uh, forms a clear image and appropriately fulfills its role in uh, a telescope, microscope or a camera. However, the lens has uh, defects of uh, construction that is uh, the curvature is uh, not proper, there are some improper uh, curvature or the material of uh, the lens is inhomogeneous, then uh, the images uh, uh, will uh, proportionately suffer and uh, a blur uh, image will uh, result. Now you can see here how the grinding of curvature on lenses is uh, uh, made. Uh, we have a spherical uh, lens. Uh, this is uh, a curvature is there on uh, the lens and uh, the light rays are falling on uh, the curved surface of the lens and the light rays are made uh, to focus. Uh, from this picture we can understand that uh, the this is the center of uh, the lens. Light rays entering the lens at a greater distance or nearer to the edge of the lens are uh, made to focus at a shorter distance from uh, the lens uh, surface. Whereas the light rays entering the lens very close to the center are made to focus at a larger distance from the lens. So because of this, a focus uh, shift uh, happens and the image will not be clear. So in order to get a clear uh, image, uh, we need to provide aspherical uh, curvature on the lens. Uh, the details of uh, the aspherical curvature is shown here. It has a special curvature as shown uh, in this uh, diagram. So because of this aspherical nature, all the light rays are made to focus uh, at one point and uh, we get a very sharp uh, image. Now how these uh, aspherical uh, uh, curvature is provided on the lenses you can see here. This is the uh, uh, lens uh, blank uh, holder. This is the uh, glass lens and this is the grinding uh, stone which uh, grinds the surface of uh, the lens. Uh, this is uh, the workpiece which is rotating and to provide uh, the required uh, curvature a template is used and there is a guide roll and uh, the diamond cutter will uh, move on the glass surface uh, and it grinds uh, the required curvature on the uh, glass surface and hence we get uh, the curvature on lens. When we use uh, spherical uh, lenses, a focus uh, shift occurs and this is uh, known as spherical operation and due to this uh, spherical operation, a blurred uh, image uh, results. There are two ways in which uh, we can eliminate this uh, spherical operation. So first method is uh, 
blocking the edges of uh, lenses. That means we can uh, block the edge of uh, the lens so that uh, the focus uh, shift is uh, minimized. And other method is a skillful combination of uh, different uh, lenses. So by combining uh, lenses uh, skillfully, we can eliminate uh, spherical aberration and we can get a clear image, sharp image. Now, uh, the chromatic uh, aberration, the lens bends some uh, colors of light more uh, sharply than uh, others. So, in this uh, diagram, we can uh, see the, the blue rays are uh, more uh, sharply bent. We can see the focus point very, very close uh, to the lens surface for uh, the blue rays and for the red color uh, rays, the focusing is at a farther uh, distance. So, this is known as uh, chromatic uh, aberration. So, this uh, chromatic aberration occurs uh, longitudinally as well as uh, laterally. So, by using uh, a chromatic doublet, that is a combination of two lenses of uh, different glass materials, this uh, chromatic aberration can be correct. Now, uh, the chromatic uh, aberration, this uh, occurs uh, when uh, light rays from a distance impinge upon the lens at an angle. That means we have a point uh, source here and uh, the light rays from point source are falling on uh, the lens uh, surface. The result is a comet-like uh, figure uh, with a tile uh, appears as shown here. So this is known as uh, chromatic aberration. So proper grinding of uh, lens uh, eliminates uh, this uh, problem. Now, during the mounting of lenses in the barrel, uh, errors uh, can uh, occur. These are known as uh, mounting errors. So, different uh, types of uh, errors are listed here. So, the first one is uh, translational displacement of the lens. That means the axis of uh, the lens is not coinciding with uh, the axis of the barrel. So, this is known as translational error or uh, centration uh, error. Another type of error is tilt of a lens. So, you can see here the lens is uh, tilted. So, because of this also the image uh, uh, quality effect is affected. Surface tilt uh, error. So, if you see sometimes what happens the lens is uh, seated properly but the surface is uh, uh, tilted, it is not manufactured properly. Uh, that is uh, surface uh, tilt uh, error. And then uh, cementing error, if you, you, if you see here, two lenses are cemented, bonded together. So, when the two uh, lenses are bonded, the axis of these two uh, lenses may not coincide, that is known as cementing uh, error. And tilt of aspherical axis. So, we have an uh, aspherical lens here, the axis of the lens is uh, tilted and then there can be air gaps between two lenses because of these errors, the image quality will be affected. Now, uh, the centration errors of uh, lenses, the precise uh, centration and uh, alignment of uh, a lens is uh, essential to get uh, the quality image. The centration error occurs when the optical axis of lens do not coincide with the reference uh, axis. So, you can uh, see here, uh, this is the axis of the lens and this is uh, the axis of the barrel in which the lenses are mounted. So, because of this uh, shift, this uh, movement of the lens, uh, uh, this gap is known as uh, centration uh, error. So, proper care uh, should be taken 
to eliminate uh, centration uh, error. So the centration error occurs uh, when uh, cementing, aligning and fixing the lenses in the barrel. So precise uh, centering can be met if uh, all the manufacturing steps are designed and incorporated into one measurement and uh, manufacturing uh, system. Now uh, here we have a set of uh, pictures, uh, the photographic uh, examples showing the high quality lens. When we use high quality lens, the image quality will be like this. And if we use a lower quality lens, the result will be like this. We can see here a blurred image and a rainbow edge. So a rainbow edge is appearing. Uh, so such uh, blurred image will be the result if the quality of lens is not uh, proper. Now this uh, assembly of lens we can observe here by using uh, a series of lens, lenses assembled properly, uh, we can uh, correct the aberration uh, error. So this is a very compact uh, uh, assembly of uh, a objective, miniature objective uh, with uh, minimum uh, aberration. The numerical aperture of uh, this objective is 0.51 and the diameter of lenses is uh, 5 mm diameter. Now let us uh, discuss about uh, optical uh, coatings. Some uh, layers of uh, materials are uh, applied on uh, the lens uh, surface to change the reflectivity of the surface and to change the transmittivity of the uh, lens surface. Now the simplest optical uh, coatings are uh, thin layers of uh, metals such as uh, aluminium which are deposited on the glass uh, substrates to make uh, mirror uh, surfaces. So this uh, process of applying the material on uh, lens surface to make it a mirror is known as silvering. Aluminium is the cheapest and uh, most common coating and yields a reflectivity of around uh, 88 to 92 percent. So another uh, important material that is applied uh, on glass surfaces uh, to make uh, to improve the reflectivity is uh, the silver which has uh, a reflectivity of uh, 95 to 99 uh, percent. Now uh, in this picture you can see some of the lenses coated with uh, uh, some coating uh, materials. Now here uh, we can see a lens uh, substrate is glass uh, lens and then a hard coating is provided to make it uh, scratch proof and you can see uh, multiple uh, layers are applied on the uh, hard coating uh, surface and uh, these are anti-reflective uh, layers to increase the transmittivity of uh, the lens and to reduce the loss of uh, light rays in the form of uh, uh, reflection and finally you can see there is another coating, hydrophobic uh, layer is applied to make the surface uh, water uh, resistant. Now here we can see a bare uh, uh, lens, no coating is applied and uh, a light ray is impinging on uh, the surface of uh, the lens. Some portion of uh, the light is uh, reflected uh, back and most of the light is uh, refracted. It is passed uh, through the glass surface and when the refracted light uh, reaches, impinges the other surface, again uh, a splitting uh, takes place and some portion of the light is uh, reflected back and uh, some portion uh, leaves the glass and enters into the air. Now this reflected light uh, reaches uh, the right side, left, right side surface of uh, the lens that is the, this uh, spot and again it undergoes uh, splitting. Some uh, light is uh, 
reflected back and some uh, light is refracted and enters into the air. Now, this uh, reflected air, uh, light rays or uh, lost uh, light rays, so due to the loss of uh, these uh, light rays, the brightness of the image that is formed uh, reduces. Now, uh, this uh, reduction in uh, brightness of the image is uh, known as uh, pixel uh, noise. Now, to reduce the loss of uh, light, that is, uh, to reduce the reflecting uh, reflection of the light rays from the lens surface, anti reflective uh, coatings are applied on the lens surface. Uh, normally magnesium uh, fluoride with uh, refractive index of 1.38 uh, is applied on the lens surface. Another material is uh, mesoporous uh, silica nanoparticles with uh, refractive index 1.12 uh, can also be applied on the lens surface to increase the transmittivity. Now, uh, this uh, picture shows uh, a lens with uh, anti-reflective uh, layer applied on uh, both the surfaces. Now again, uh, the light is impinging. Now, now when we apply this anti-reflective uh, layer uh, like this, this is uh, the bare uh, lens glass surface and now coating uh, is uh, applied. Now when the light uh, impinges the surface, first it has to enter into the anti-reflective coating and then it will enter from anti-reflective coating to the glass uh, surface, gla uh, into the glass. Now when the light uh, falls on the anti-reflective coating surface, some light is uh, reflected back and remaining light uh, will pass into the coating again it uh, reaches the surface of the glass and again uh, the splitting takes place some light will is reflected back and some light will pass into the glass now where the reflected light again it falls on uh, the so this uh, interface again splitting takes place some light uh, will uh, pass into the air and some uh, light is reflected back now we can see uh, this is the amount of light uh, that is uh, lost, that is reflected uh, light. Now, some of these two reflected components uh, will be less than the reflected component that would result from the bare uh, glass alone, so that the overall loss of light will be reduced. So, by applying uh, the anti-reflective coating, the amount of light that is lost uh, is uh, reduced. So, most of the light will uh, pass through the lens. So, image uh, quality will uh, improve. Now, if the layer thickness, anti-reflective coating uh, layer thickness is uh, correct, that is one-fourth of wavelength of incident light, then the two reflected light rays will be out of phase with uh, one another and they will cancel out each other. So, this uh, process decreases the total amount of uh, reflected light and increases the amount of light that is, uh, that is transmitted uh, through the lens. So, because of this, the contrast uh, increases. Uh, this reason is, uh, the, uh, there is reduction in the stray light uh, from uh, internal uh, reflection. Since, uh, the reflected light uh, amount decreases, uh, the internal uh, reflection uh, will uh, um, reduce and uh, the contrast uh, of the image uh, will increase and brightness of the image uh, will also increase due to the increased uh, light transmission through the glass uh, surface. And the improvement in uh, light transmission due to coating on a single lens surface may be very a few percent, but the total improvement resulting from coating of all uh, lenses, lens surfaces in a design of 10 to 20 lenses uh, will be many times higher 
as high as 99.9 percent. Now let us start uh, the discussion on uh, lens uh, mounting. This lens mounting is a major uh, concern in uh, getting uh, a good quality picture. The lens uh, barrel, which is a mechanical uh, part, uh, this barrel holds uh, all the lens and uh, lens assemblies. Uh, the lens barrel uh, should be properly machined uh, to ensure proper uh, axial and radial positioning of uh, all the optical uh, elements. Now, with this uh, diagram, uh, we can see a, a barrel, a mechanical structure which uh, holds uh, the lenses. A proper uh, seating uh, should be uh, machined so that uh, the lenses can be placed uh, properly. The tolerances uh, should be maintained, uh, appropriate tolerances should be maintained so that uh, the radial position, positioning is uh, obtained. The uh, lenses must be mounted inside uh, the barrel uh, so that the centers of curvature of all the optical uh, surfaces fall on a common uh, uh, line called uh, optical axis. You can see here we have this uh, common line which is known as uh, optical axis. There are many elements, many lenses are uh, there. The center of curvature of all these elements should fall on uh, this uh, optical uh, axis. If they do not uh, uh, fall, if the center of curvature is not falling on uh, the common uh, axis, then the image quality will be suffered. You can see here, uh, this particular uh, sub-assembly, uh, uh, we have the axis of uh, sub-assembly, this is the axis and uh, then we have uh, the common axis, the optical axis. Now there is a gap. So this gap is known as uh, centering uh, error. So because of this image quality suffers. Also, the tilting of uh, lens, uh, we can uh, see here, when the lens tilts, the center of curvature will not fall on the uh, optical axis because of this the image quality suffers. Also the radial positioning of uh, the uh, lenses uh, is very very important. Uh, uh, the axial axis. Also the axial uh, positioning of uh, the lenses is uh, very very important proper gap uh, should be provided between uh, the two lenses, adjacent lenses, so that uh, image quality is uh, enhanced. Now this uh, gap between two lenses is also known as uh, ear uh, spaces. Now uh, the adjustment of uh, ear spaces between uh, adjacent uh, lenses, there should be some provision for uh, Ear space uh, adjustment. For that, uh, we can always uh, use uh, spacers and uh, shim uh, plates between two adjacent lenses so that proper gap is maintained. Also, we can use uh, balls and uh, wedges. You can see some mechanism here. So, we have a ball and then we have a conical uh, screw here. When the conical screw is driven inside, uh, it uh, pushes the ball uh, outside, it, the ball uh, rises. And here we can see uh, a cantilevered uh, wedge carrying uh, half uh, ball. So when the screw is uh, uh, driven inside, the wedge uh, shaped, uh, the, the, this wedge moves up along with uh, the half ball. That means when the ball uh, moves up, the lens will also move up. So when the ball moves up, the lens will move up and hence we can maintain uh, the required uh, uh, air space between the two lenses. So some mechanism like this uh, should be provided for adjustment of uh, the lenses in the axial direction. 
Now, radial positioning of lenses is also very, very important. You can see the barrel here with uh, the seat uh, machine. Now, you can see the optical axis of the lens and this is the uh, barrel uh, axis, that is reference axis. Now, there is a shift. One side, uh, the uh, lens has uh, displayed. So, this is known as uh, radial positioning or centering uh, uh, error. So, some mechanism should be provided, uh, for example, centering uh, screw should be provided here. So, here we can make uh, a screw. So, by rotating uh, these uh, screws, so one more screw can be provided here. So, by rotating these screws, uh, the lens can be centered. Care should be taken to see that uh, the screws are not over tightened. If they are over tightened, then the lenses are subjected to stresses which will affect uh, the image quality. Now, the straight uh, barrels can be used for assembling uh, the lenses. If you use straight barrel, all lenses uh, will be of uh, same uh, diameter. You can see here a straight uh, barrel and uh, many lenses are placed inside uh, the barrel and uh, spacers are uh, provided here to maintain uh, the proper uh, air space between the two lenses. Now uh, this uh, straight barrel is easy to machine and uh, the cost is less uh, and all uh, the lenses can be easily mounted inside uh, the straight uh, barrel and the precision of uh, positioning is limited to the precision of various uh, elements including the uh, stack up uh, uh, errors. Now normally the aluminium, stainless steel, titanium and invar are used uh, to make uh, the barrel. Uh, we should select appropriate uh, material with uh, very low coefficient of thermal expansion so that thermal effects are uh, minimized and uh, the machining accuracy is normally for, uh, from 25 to 50 microns and uh, centration adjustment based on rotation measurement can be provided and spacing adjustment by spacers can be provided. Now here we can see uh, an assembly uh, of uh, lens in the barrel in the cell body. This is the uh, cell body and it has got internal uh, 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 threaded uh, portion and uh, then we have uh, a lens, plano convex lens with uh, the two uh, uh, lens ca capsule part. So lens is placed in uh, the, the capsule and uh, it is assembled and the complete uh, lens capsule assembly can be inserted into the uh, cell body and you can see here we have uh, Externally threaded uh, retainer and uh, retainer wing is pushed uh, inside, uh, threaded inside uh, uh, to assemble the, the lens capsule into the body. So, this uh, shows the lens capsule inside uh, the cell body. And uh, by rotating uh, the retainer, uh, we can uh, apply axial. Uh, preload to the lens so that it sits uh, properly in the seat. Uh, we should not uh, play uh, more, uh, over uh, preload. In that case, uh, the lens uh, uh, will be stressed and image quality suffers. Now, but there is a small clearance between uh, the lens and uh, the cell body which will be filled by the gum. Now, stepped uh, barrel also can be used for mounting of uh, lenses. In this case, the lenses of varying sizes can be accommodated in the stepped bar barrel. We can see a single piece uh, stepped barrel. So, uh, we have seats for placing uh, the lenses, and then we can also see spacers and uh, retainer rings. And here we can see two part uh, lens uh, barrel. This is the, the first part of the barrel having uh, two lenses, and this is the second uh, part of uh, the stepped barrel with a single lens. And then these two pieces are uh, uh, 
tight uh, fitted to make uh, a single uh, assembly. Now, lens, uh, proper lens uh, seal should be provided in the uh, cell body or the barrel so that uh, uh, they are seated properly. Here we can see sharp uh, corner uh, seat and this is uh, the concave surface of the lens. It is resting on sharp corner of uh, the seat. Here we have a convex lens which is resting on the sharp corner of uh, the uh, seat. Appropriate uh, radius uh, should be provided uh, to this uh, corner so that uh, the scratching of lens is uh, minimized. And here we can see tangential or conical uh, seat. Uh, the convex surface of the lens is in contact tangentially with this particular uh, seat. So, proper uh, geometrical uh, uh, tolerances uh, should be provided uh, on the barrel so that uh, the seating of lens is uh, proper. Now, this uh, picture shows uh, uh, the spherical uh, seat the center of curvature, the radius of curvature of the this uh, portion of uh, the seat and radius of curvature of lens should uh, match each other. So, careful uh, machining is required in order to uh, get uh, this uh, spherical uh, seat. Now, uh, in the barrel, we can uh, provide uh, centration adjustment uh, by providing uh, screws, centering screws or by using rotation and optical uh, measurement uh, technique we can uh, center the lenses. So, but this process uh, will be very labor uh, intensive uh, process and we can achieve uh, 10 micrometer precision very easily uh, whereas uh, 1 micrometer is uh, possible. So, we should have uh, an arrangement to rotate the lens system on uh, an air bearing and adjust uh, lens centration and then uh, we can apply uh, gum to position to fix the lenses and uh, there should be provision for uh, spacing adjustment uh, uh, axial adjustment with uh, shims so we can always select uh, proper uh, spacer uh, this uh, method will be labor uh, intensive uh, assembly and we can achieve uh, 20 mic um, micrometer uh, precision very easily and 5 micrometer is also possible. We can see some uh, shims and uh, the assembly process of uh, shim in the barrel. But in the assembly here we can see the shim placed uh, between uh, the adjacent uh, lenses. Now, uh, we can always uh, mount uh, the lenses in uh, sub cell and we can make uh, sub assemblies and uh, the individual sub assemblies can be put into the uh, barrel uh, uh, to stack up uh, the complete uh, assembly. So, this uh, process will be very labor intensive and expensive and in this uh, process we can achieve 10 micrometer uh, uh, positioning the accuracy very easily and less than 10 uh, less than 1 micrometer positioning accuracy is also possible now how do we hold uh, the lens in a barrel uh, how do we eliminate the falling of uh, uh, lens in, inside the barrel you can see here a c shaped uh, ring snapped into a group. So, this is the uh, cell or barrel and this is the lens and uh, the C shaped ring is snapped into the groove. There is a groove here, we can see the groove and uh, this is the seat uh, for lens. Lens is placed in the cell body and then uh, the C shaped ring is placed in the groove. Uh, so that the lens uh, will not fall and we can uh, also use uh, pressed in continuous uh, rings. So, here we have a continuous uh, uh, ring 
that is uh, press fitted into the cell uh, body which holds uh, the lens in uh, position. Now how do we uh, statically seal the lens inside uh, a cell? Now uh, different uh, methods are available. So here we can see an o-ring around uh, the lens rim. So this is the lens and this is the edge of uh, the lens and this is the mount that is the cell body and uh, the o-ring is uh, placed between the lens and uh, the cell body. It is pressed and pushed into the place and then retain a threaded uh, retainer ring uh, is uh, positioned as shown here. Now here uh, we can see the o-ring between uh, retainer cell and uh, lens uh, edge. So we have the cell body or the barrel body and we have the lens. So o-ring is placed between the cell body and uh, the lens uh, edge and then uh, the uh, threaded uh, retainer is uh, positioned. And other method is uh, injecting uh, elastomeric uh, seal. So the lens is placed inside uh, the body, cell body, and then the retina ring is uh, uh, threaded into the cell body to hold uh, the lens. And then the elastomer seal is uh, poured into the body. That means there should be a small uh, hole in the cell body to pour uh, the elastomeric uh, seal and then uh, the elastomer is uh, allowed to solidify which holds uh, the lens in position. Now let us see how we can uh, achieve the dynamic sealing of uh, moving uh, lens uh, assemblies. If you observe this uh, picture we can uh, understand that this is the mount and uh, uh, we have uh, the lens and uh, there is a movable uh, lens uh, assembly. So this will be moving uh, parallel to the optical axis. So in such cases how to seal the lenses. So we can always use uh, o-ring uh, dynamic uh, cell so that uh, the lens is positioned uh, properly. Or uh, another method is with a quad uh, ring. We can use a quad ring as shown here to dynamically seal uh, the moving uh, lenses. Now uh, in the previous cases the edge of the lens was used uh, uh, for mounting. Now let us understand the lens mounting using an optical surface. We can see here we have an optical surface here we have another optical surface here. Uh, using these optical uh, surfaces we can mount uh, the lenses that is mounting a lens by uh, see if we use the edges these uh, edges are uh, poorly finished. So if we use the edges then uh, there are chances of uh, decentration tilt and uh, the combination of uh, tilt and decentering. To avoid that, we can always use optical uh, surface uh, contact lens mounting. So you can see here, optical surface is used for mounting uh, purpose. So accurate lens edging is uh, not uh, needed with uh, this uh, type of uh, mounting. Now with this, we will conclude uh, the module 12, lecture number uh, 7. In this uh, lecture, we discussed about uh, some portion of uh, chromic force microscopy that is uh, limitations of AFM, measurement uh, challenges associated with uh, AFM and then uh, large area AFM, calibration of AFM and then uh, we started discussion on the optical uh, system uh, design. Under this we have uh, covered uh, types of lenses, defects in lenses and what are the different uh, optical coatings and how to mount uh, the lens in a barrel. Uh, with this we will conclude uh, lecture 7. In the next lecture we will continue the discussion on uh, optical uh, system design. Thank you.